Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the next installment in the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight webinar series. And uh, it's great to be here with you today. Uh, we here at Admiral Markets, we appreciate it's been a rather a tumultuous year, and uh, we hope that you are uh, all safe and well wherever you're joining us from the uh, from the world. It's great to have you here. We really uh, appreciate your company. And uh, today, what we're going to talk about is how to trade false breakouts. And as the strap line says there, we're looking at how to turn a price action failure into a trading opportunity. So uh, as always, I appreciate that we have, you know, a real wide range of experience in the room uh, for these sessions. Appreciate there's people who are just complete beginners and people who are quite experienced uh, traders. So it'd be great to hear and understand, you know, what your own experience has been of trading false breakouts. Maybe it's part of your uh, uh, trading plan because you've got some experience. Maybe you're a complete beginner and you've never really heard or understand it and are here to just try and learn how to uh, identify them and actually how to sort of turn them into a, a trading opportunity. It'd be great if you could just stick it up there in the chat box or if you're watching this on demand on the Admiral Markets YouTube channel please you know put a put a comment in the uh, box you can ask us questions we're always absolutely delighted to sort of have some interaction to see how uh, how you know the engagement we are with you in terms of understanding and how we're helping you if you've got any particular ideas that you'd like to see us cover in future by all means slap it in there we're always interested to take that on board uh, and we can build that into the plan for 2021. But as I say, today we're going to focus on how to trade uh, false breakouts. Uh, and it's great to sort of see that uh, there's so many of you here joining us today. It's fantastic. Uh, Yomi says he's, uh, it's a good topic because he's been caught out before. Well, fantastic, Yomi. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully, we'll just give you a little bit of insight into them today. Uh, and that might actually help you going forward in your own particular trading journey. And that's uh, but great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, your uh, interaction there. So as always, you know, we're here with Admiral Markets, okay, a, a Forex and CFD broker that provide, you know, a wide range of instruments. Uh, you can find that they are licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular of trading products and allowing you the opportunity to engage with markets during through the uh, sort of most popular trading platforms, MT4, MT5, uh, and also the uh, Admiral Markets Supreme edition if you've got any particular questions about admiral markets please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help and guide you so what we're going to talk about today all right ladies and what should we cover right well let's look at firstly what is a false breakout okay how are we going to define what a false breakout is some people might have, uh, as I said, some people might have no real understanding or idea of uh, what a false breakout is. Others might actually have, a, uh, as I said, might be actually quite experienced at trading them. All right, but we'll 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 give you what I believe is a simple definition uh, of a, a false breakout. And what we'll look at is, well, you know, are they a threat or or an opportunity? Um, you know, and that'd be interesting to, to know what you think. Maybe you think they're a threat. Maybe you think you're a, they're an opportunity for you. If you've got a, an idea or a thought, as I say, please pop it in the chat box and uh, we can happily discuss them. Uh, and then we'll talk about, well, how can we trade them? Okay. And clearly we're all traders here. That's what we're uh, looking for. So what I'll do is uh, I will share a, a, a very simple, okay. A very simple way. Okay. There's uh, lots of different ways that you can turn, okay. A, a, a false breakout into an opportunity. Uh, and I'll share one very simple way that might actually help you might give you an idea and a way to, to look at markets in a new way that provide uh, uh, you know, new trading opportunities for you. And then what we'll do is then if there's time at the end, we'll switch across to the live markets uh, and we'll just have a look at a couple of opportunities that might be setting up there okay, or trades that have set up there. I appreciate it always helps to be able to sort of take the uh, education that we provide you and look to be able to apply that into a live market. So stay with us till the end. Uh, and as I said, we'll switch across to, to live markets towards the end of the session. So um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Paul. You know, I've, uh, I've traded for many years, okay? I've traded and coached clients, okay? I've traded for, for funds, for uh, high net worth clients, et cetera, and uh, also coach traders from, from banks through to complete beginners. So, you know, it brings a lot of experience to actually being able to, to help, uh, you know, help you in your own particular trading journey. Primarily, I look to trade FX indices and commodities. That's where I would uh, specialize. And, and I'm primarily a trend trader for the longer term trading. And I'm a my kind of mean reversion, reversal trader for sort of shorter term intraday trading. So 
let's talk about how to trade false breakouts. So, you know, we had one or two people there before saying that, you know, they'd been caught uh, caught on the wrong side. Maybe others of you, you know, like them. Maybe others parts of you actually particularly, you know, sort of enjoy false breakouts, you know. Uh, as, we, uh, as we go through the rest of the session, you'll start to learn about my own particular experience and thoughts of them. But as it says there, many traders like to trade breakouts of ranges as their main method. OK, and uh, the thing about breakouts is, is when they work, uh, they work very, very well. All right. And uh, but they do not work all the time. And, and personally, and this is my own personal experience is that certainly within FX markets, you know, they can they can fail as often as they particularly work. Uh, and what we'd find is that people who are specifically breakout traders might have, you know, particular ideas or filters or conditions that help them choose better sort of uh, breakout trades for themselves. But. You know, my view is that when they fail, when those breakouts fail, they can present us with an opportunity. And that's what I'm going to talk about and share with you today. But let's start at the beginning by reminding ourselves of the main sort of trading styles. And as I said, I appreciate we always have a bit of a wide range of people here in the room. So we'll start with just, you know, a little bit of a quick look into some of the main trading styles and, and how that leads us to being able to understand trading false breakouts. So, you know, what we'll have is uh, is a case of you can go on the Internet. OK, you can go onto the Internet and you can, you know, sort of, you know, Google or right, look for trading and investing methods. OK, and you'll find thousands on there, thousands and thousands on there. OK, from free uh, methods up to very expensive methods. OK, but generally, as a rule, as a rule of thumb, ladies and gentlemen, Certainly with trading methods, they tend to all boil down to one of two simple styles. All right. And we've talked about this before, right at the start of a trading spotlight uh, series. Namely, your trading style is going to break down into either you are trading a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off a line of support resistance. And it's quite as simple as that. As I said, you can find thousands of methods on the Internet, OK, you know, and all sorts of uh, complexity, etc., all sorts of sort of exclusivity in terms of how they're uh, operated. But the reality is when you boil it down, you're either trading a break of a line of support resistance or you're trading a bounce off a line of support resistance. As simple as that. OK, and, you know, sometimes, you know, and, and I am. I'm guilty of this myself is that, you know, sometimes as human beings, especially men, we kind of overcomplicate things. OK, we make things harder than they need to be. And that's very easy in trading. And actually, sometimes it helps for us to be reminded that, you know what, I'm either trading a break of a line of support resistance or I'm trading a bounce off a line of support resistance. You know, sometimes, you know, just having that little bit of simplicity gives us a bit of clarity and allows us to sort of choose and make better choices going forward. So, you know, for those of you who are completely new and we look at, you know, trading a particular break of a level of support resistance, uh, you know, there's just a little old chart of the dollar against the Japanese uh, uh, yen here, 15 minute chart. But what we're really interested in is that, you know, we can identify kind of levels of support and resistance in this particular case. They're just sort of short term ones. But really, it's the idea of being able to identify a particular levels, OK, levels that sort of leap off the chart at us like there is in terms of a level of resistance or alternatively being able to identify a level of support. And as you can see here, let's bring up the old uh, drawing tool here, ladies and gentlemen, is, you know, what we can see here is, you know, what's the key element here? And uh, as I say every week, I uh, apologize for my uh, apologize for my drawing skills. I'm a, I'm a better trader than I am an artist, but you get the gist, ladies and gentlemen, you understand what we're uh, looking at here. What we've had there is in that particular, you know, scenario, that particular example, we had a break of a level of support resistance. In this particular case, it was a break of support. Okay, it was a nice little channel, very clearly defined uh, resistance at the top, very clearly defined resistance support at the bottom. And actually that broke and the trade went through there. So hopefully you can see that. And as I said, you know, try and hopefully uh, understand that. OK, that's great. Rachel, you're very welcome to, to join us. Great to see you here again. OK, great to see everybody here. And, uh, you know, as I said, we're trading that's a break of a level of support resistance. OK, let's keep it. Let's keep it nice and simple to begin with. Alternatively, OK, as I said, you might be trading a bounce off a level of support or resistance. So uh, this is a chart of the euro against the US dollar. It's on the daily chart. 
we can see that it's in a trend. It's quite clearly, okay, you know, it being in a trend. But even with that, what we can start to, to see is that, you know, in particular, what we've seen is price has bounced off in this particular case, the, the 50 period moving average, which has acted as dynamic resistance. But that has also sort of interjected at particular areas with, with horizontal levels of support and resistance also. And so hopefully you can see is that even though we've been in a trend, when price has pulled back, it has bounced off. And in this particular case, a level of dynamic resistance, which is what was provided by the 50 period moving average. So remember that you're trading a break of a level of support resistance or a bounce off a level of support or resistance. Be interesting to know who of you are here today. You know what do you have as your preference? Okay, I'm not saying that you can't. You know you can't trade both styles. But what you do tend to find is that people will sort of kind of uh, lean one way or the other, right? And uh, be interesting to know. You know what you particularly like to trade yourself, whether you're particularly a breakout trader or whether you're a kind of a particular a, a bounce trader for for want of a better description. Uh, and in this particular case, okay, this is a kind of an interesting case because this is the uh, this was the Kiwi yen, okay, and it's on the weekly chart. Uh, and actually, what we can see here is you're watching price bouncing off levels of support resistance, which is actually what forms a range, okay, before it breaks out, okay, and continues to sort of uh, head northwards. Uh, and that's what you know you're trying to understand and see, okay, this in this particular case, I always find it an interesting, uh, interesting chart is that realistically for what was about four, four and a half years, okay, you could see that, you know, the sort of the Kiwi yen, it was bouncing off, okay, resistance at the 69 level, you can see there for your top, uh, and but also bouncing off areas of support around, okay, about 58, okay, in terms of support level, and price just literally bounced its way until until it finally did break out, okay, and then actually continued up it in a new trend. So it is particularly possible that, you know, th that these two will work in harmony in the sense of, you know, there will be periods of uh, markets where markets will break out and continue to run very nicely, but there will also be nice periods where markets particularly bounce between levels of support resistance. And this is part of your, you know, developing your skills as a, as a trader to be able to analyze markets and identify these particular levels, areas, zones, okay, however you wish to particularly describe them, to sort of give you the kind of idea of uh, particular levels that might be of interest because you'd be interested because price might either break out of it or price might bounce off that particular level. And that becomes very interesting. Uh, that becomes very interesting to us. <clears throat> So uh, uh, Edwin said, you know, uh, you know, maybe you could have a look at the euro sterling four hours seems to be support whilst the pound here, Swiss appears to be a long resistance level on a daily chart. Yeah, well, what we can do is we'll, we'll have a little bit of a, a look at that. I think, you know, I've got one kind of euro sterling in as one of my uh, particular charts. Edwin, we'll, uh, we'll have a look and see if there's anything, uh, if anything is happening uh, there, we can look at it. So uh, Yomi says, you know, he prefers a breakout because a bounce off dynamic is, is lagging price. Um, that's kind of one particular way to, to look at it. We'll, we'll maybe discuss a little bit later. Uh, Rachel says sometimes it's very dangerous trading a, uh, a breakout. So, you know, um, you know, what I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, is, is there is no perfection in trading, okay? Uh, anybody who tells you there is or tries to offer you that, uh, it's not, okay? You know, uh, markets are uh, dynamic, they're volatile, they, they change, okay, they shift. Uh, and it's part of our job as traders to be able to, to, be able to adapt when market shift and occasionally be able to sort of be ahead of it and, and ready to uh, ready to sort of adapt to sort of kind of new market conditions. What we will find is that there will be periods during a year where markets, you know, will break out to new levels, perhaps as very, very strong trends and move there. There will also be periods when during the year when markets will effectively will be bouncing between range. It'll be effectively kind of range bound. Okay. You know, that's just the way markets are. Your ability to be able to identify what kind of environment that that market in is is what will actually help you make better trading choices in terms of which kind of trading method you particularly should employ, or if for, let's say for example you know you're you're a uh, uh, you know you're a, a you're a breakout trader okay and you're looking for prices to break out in new trends but actually the market environment is, is completely range bounded maybe like a little bit like this chart we see in front of us well then you can make the decision to either 
not to sort of trade that particular market and then move to one that is perhaps more suitable to your kind of trading style. So, you know, it, it becomes part of it. And you, you've heard me talk all about those kind of four M's of trading constantly, okay? Markets, method, money, and myself. And it is the kind of the melding of that, all right, okay? The, the way they overlap and support each other is what helps you in your own particular um, trading journey. So, so, you know, as I said, we'll start at the beginning and, you know, look at either trading a you know, break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off, all right? As I said, there is no perfection. They both have their pros and cons, all right? They both have their pros and cons. Some people prefer breakouts. Some people prefer bounces. Generally, I prefer to trade bounces as part of a pullback in a trend. That is my general preference. And if you were to go back through all of my kind of trading records and journals, you'll see that that comes out as, you know, my particular preferred way to trade. And it's actually the best way for me to trade. You know, and I have done quite a bit of work trying to understand why that is, you know, and I'm very happy and comfortable trading that particular style. And one of the reasons is, is because it gives me an opportunity to enter at a better price. And also, if I know I'm wrong, I know I'm wrong far sooner and that that actually suits me. But one of the other elements is I also love trading a breakout when it fails. OK, when price is broken out, whether it be of a level or whether it be a particular range, maybe it's sort of a small period of consolidation when it tries to break out and it actually fails. OK, that that always appeals to me. That sort of um, that brings out the uh, that brings out the kind of uh, the sort of uh, the, the trading hunter in me. OK, because I see that. Personally, I see that as a fantastic opportunity. And what I'm going to do is talk about kind of a simple way to sort of share that and look at that um, uh, particularly with you. Uh, you're very welcome, Edwin. We'll, we'll have a little look at that, okay? Uh, Russell says, you know, I think the best thing is to wait for a pullback then uh, and a breakout. So uh, you're just uh, trying to hedge your uh, hedge your bets there, Russell. You want to you want a bit of both sides of the uh, of the party. That's um, fair enough, okay? You uh, you're all able to make your own choices and decisions in the way you uh, look to trade uh, all i'm going to do is, is is share you know a, a very very simple way okay very simple way that you could understand and see and trade false breakouts yourself okay um the, there are there are actually quite a few different ways you can do it there are quite a few different styles or quite a few different indicators etc but but today i'm just going to use very, very simple, okay, based on the price action, which hopefully will just help you give you a little simple idea that you can take away and start to employ in your trading straight away, because that's that's what we want. I want you to be able to have ideas and insights that you can take away and, and immediately start to recognize and see uh, on the charts in front of you, okay, because I think that's the... Uh, that's the you know the best way that you know that we can help you in kind of terms of your education journey and and here in your admiral markets we you know we want to be able to sort of share and you know pass on these kind of uh, uh, ideas and thoughts and concepts to you to take away and, and particularly use. So, uh, as I said, uh, breakouts fail all the time. Okay, you know even even in strong trending markets, okay, breakouts can fail. And I personally, from personal experience, I find that it fail an awful lot in FX markets, okay? Uh, and, you know, as I said, for some people, that might be a threat. For other people, that's an opportunity. Uh, personally, I see that as, uh, as an opportunity. Uh, and for many breakout traders, that means, you know, a, a failed trade, okay? That, that particular failed trader position, okay, has, has failed against them. However, for a rather patient and educated trader, it also offers an opportunity, all right? When those breakouts fail, and we'll, we'll have a look at a chart or two in a moment, and we can see that that basically provides us with an opportunity. And as I say, well, let's take a look at how we could trade these. Sometimes you'll hear them called, you know, false breakouts. Sometimes you'll even hear them called fake outs, okay? It's just a, it's just a you know, sort of a, a mashing together of the, uh, of the two particular words and keys. But what we're looking at is, you know, a, a breakout that has, uh, has failed and actually how has it failed? What is it that actually we need to uh, sort of uh, take on board and understand and recognize um, what's happening? Uh, so Rachel says, you know, I'm in my learning process, but also put my risk management besides my trading strategies. This has helped me stay in my trading plan, but I'm also learning from you guys. Uh, th that's great, Rachel. You know, it's, it's great to have you here, and it's great to hear that you are uh, that you're learning for us. Uh, and I can assure you, okay, uh, you know, always have a first first and foremost focus on your uh, risk management. Okay, first and foremost. Okay, that's um, you know, those of you who've joined me, you know, for the last year or so on the trading spotlight webinars will know. Always, you know, first and foremost, you know, if you're not managing risk, it, you'll eventually be roadkill. All right, it's it's 
unbelievably important to sort of start from there and then out of that you will you will develop your own particular training styles and if you've got good learning processes that will just help you uh, make a sort of a swifter transition in your journeys but so that's a great that. thank you for sharing that race but let's have a little chat about uh false breakouts okay so here we go ladies and gentlemen so it, here's what i'm going to do is, is just share with you a, a very simple as i say very simple um how to sort of trade a false breakout all right so and here is a very simple setup for you so uh, in this particular case uh, what we're going to look at and what we're going to use is uh, we're just going to use daily charts and i'm going to start with just sort of sharing with you a, a short setup now um, false breakouts okay failed breakouts they occur across all instruments and across all time frames so they are what i would like to consider as time frame and instrument agnostic okay it doesn't really matter However, for the purposes of today, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to focus just on daily charts just within here in the slides because I recognize that, you know, an awful lot of the people here joining us, you know, they're probably trading perhaps around uh, either uh, day jobs or homeschooling in this particular uh, uh, climate, okay, and might actually only be able to trade sort of daily charts maybe at the start of the day or at the end of the day. You know, and it's also a good thing because uh, things don't happen as fast. You know, you're actually not necessarily having to make decisions in fast moving markets. And, and what we want to do is if you can start to learn and understand the concept, well, then, then you know, once you can see that and you can identify it and you can trade it, well, then actually, yes, you, you know, you could actually employ it across all time frames and across all instruments. But you, it's, you know, you've just got to get it, master it in one particular area first. That will help you uh, enormously in your, uh, in your trading journey. Uh, Rachel says thank you so much you're very welcome Rachel it's great to it's great to have you here so daily chart ladies and gentlemen what we're looking to do here let's get the old drawing tool is we're looking to do in particular case we're, we're looking for you know where price has a minimum of at least two touches of a level of resistance now that level of resistance uh, maybe it's a, a big round number okay like you know 120 in the uh, in the euro dollar Maybe it's a, a particular, you know, long term sort of level of, uh, of resistance. Uh, perhaps it is a, a, a pretty short recent OK level of resistance that has been created for reasons that are probably unknown to you. OK, for some reason, there has been a particular element. So in, in this particular case here, uh, um, I, you know, I don't. I don't know. This is a daily chart. But I don't even know what instrument it is because actually it doesn't really matter what instrument it is. What I wanted to do is to focus on identifying the kind of particular price section. Uh, and what we can see here is, uh, as I say, I always apologize for my drawing. Price has risen. Uh, and then actually what we see is we actually have we have a little high point. And then the next day it touches it again. Uh, and then two days later, it touches it again. And what we can see there is, you know, we have now got sort of three in that particular case, three touches at the uh, resistance level. So, you know, um, that resistance level might have been created by an algo. Maybe it's been created by a big commercial um, seller. The truth of the matter is you don't know. You can only trade what you see. And as I said, I, you know, you can look for it to have at least two touch resistance. The reality is, as you'll find with most trading, the more sort of touches you have, the clearer that level becomes, the kind of the, the more sort of uh, solidity it will have, right? So, you know, as it says, they're preferably looking for three or four touches. This one has had three touches so far. But then what we have is the next day, what you can actually see, and maybe you can just see that there yourself, is that at some point during that day, price actually breaks above that level. Price actually breaks, it takes it into that new level. Just think what must have happened there, okay? What must have happened is when it does that, is that lots of breakout traders who have seen this particular level, a um, particular level occurring, they have probably put their buy levels, okay? They've probably put their buy orders, okay? Their buy stops just above that particular level. And invariably, that becomes very attractive to, to sort of market makers and, and other players in markets. And so price breaks that previous uh, resistance level. It basically comes in, it sucks up, goes a few pips for it, it might be, might be two, three pips, might be 30 pips, might be 50 pips, depending upon the particular time frame and the, and the scale you're looking at. But what actually is the important element for us is that price breaks that level. But actually what you can see from the price action is that price having broken through that, price fails, okay? Price fails and it collapses. And actually in this particular case, and what's important to us is that it ends up with actually with a bearish close. So prices, prices opened here, 
It has pushed to what is effectively a kind of a new high, a new recent high, but it fails. It fails to basically close above that level. It fails. The breakout of that fails and price actually collapses and closes in a bearish close there. Okay. In this particular case, we have a red candle. So what we've had there is we have had an example of a fail breakout. We've had a few touches of a level. Price has tried to push above it. It's failed and it's fallen away. And it's fallen away quite significantly. Uh, and what we would be looking to do is you'd look to be kind of a seller on the what might be in this particular case the next day or it might be the kind of next uh, next period if this was a five minute chart okay you know as i said once you start to identify and recognize the particular areas and levels it's pretty much time frame and instrument agnostic but increasingly what we want to see is you know we're next day we'd be looking to be you know a seller of that market at the start of the next day where we know where we want to have our stop loss. Our stop loss is actually going to be, you know, above that kind of false breakout. Remember, we're managing risk, okay, is, is key. And what we're looking to do is, you know, you're looking really to sort of let that trade. Now, some people would have targets, some people might trail. But, you know, realistically, you know, you're certainly looking actually, you know, for kind of the next sort of kind of previous sort of significant level of support. And in this particular case, you can actually see that sort of, you know, sort of price actually drifted down there quite nicely. So, that's what we're looking for in terms of for a short setup. Hopefully, you know, as I said, it's quite simple. Okay. It's, well, you know, there's no, you can see here, although there was a couple of moving averages on that chart. Okay. It, it actually is about the price action. It's about price action, being able to identify that, uh, that particular level. As I said, sometimes it'll be over a long period. In this particular case, it was over three, four days. Okay. So just having a good routine as a part of your analysis of markets, you start to identify particular levels like that and actually see price try and break out it fail, it roll over, fall away, and then we're actually looking to, to short it away. Hopefully you can uh, see that. And hopefully, as I said, it's just a very, very simple way for people to start to look at, at identifying particular sort of uh, um, trading opportunities in that style. Uh, and we've got a couple of examples. Well, there's just one example there. In fact, you know, we've got uh, this case of this was, you know, the US Canadian US dollar against the Canadian dollar on the daily chart. Uh, and what hopefully you can see there is that that example is that, you know, having price rallied up a little bit, it actually put in those three level touches. Okay. Go okay, touch it once, touch it twice, touch it three, broke through it on the fourth time before it uh, dropped away. Uh, and actually, you might be able to see a level there, which we're about to talk on uh, in a moment. So, as I said, you're on a daily chart. Things aren't happening as fast, okay? So at the end of the day, you can quite quickly and I easily identify those particular sort of levels that might be created based upon, you know, just, just doing your analysis and your routine every single day. As I said, you know, ideally, you know, we want a minimum of two, but preferably, really, you're looking for about three or four. That's that's the ideal, okay? You know, that gives you just a little bit more confidence, a little bit more, uh, a, you know, a little bit more happiness in, in being able to see the sort of the trade set up in front of you. Uh, and, you know, and this was a particular case of uh, the euro against the Japanese yen. Um, price had clearly been in quite an uptrend. You know, it makes a it makes a high here, uh, and then it comes back up to it a couple of days later, and it doesn't break out, but it comes back down. The next day, it tries to break out, okay, but it actually it fails. But here's the thing: if you notice this candle here, okay, even though the sort of tried to break out above that particular level. It closed beneath it, all right, and actually, but it was a bullish close, okay? There's, there's a green candle close. It's still a bullish close. There's still, there's still kind of not an overwhelm of the bulls, okay? And that's what we're looking to do. You know, the, the bulls are still, a, you know, an element of control. But the next day, what we can see, it might not be necessarily as clear here, is that price does try to break out of this level, tries to push up, but it, it fails. It fails, it falls away, and actually it closes as a... Uh, it closes a bearish candle. It's closed as a rejection candle, a pin bar, even even nicer for us as the as the thing says. And actually, what we see is then actually the price basically starts to make a nice move down, right back to uh, right back to sort of kind of areas of uh, clear area support uh, here, and, and so it actually moves quite nicely. So, as I said, hopefully that uh, you know you can understand. Okay, we've you know we've had one touch, two touch, three touch. And it was actually kind of the fourth touch that gave us uh, effectively that kind of false breakout, right? That uh, false breakout pushed above those uh, particular levels, fell away, closed and was a bearish close beneath that level uh, and was also a, a rejection candle, which is, doesn't have to be, but uh, you know, historically I 
particularly prefer that okay it's it's a you're starting to get a confluence of events okay there's a few things happening all at the same time and place that give you um, a great opportunity and as i said this is the euro yen daily chart but you know with a bit of time and practice and experience you'll, you'll actually start to see that you know that this could have been this could be the one minute chart the one month chart okay the four hour chart uh, and that's what we're particularly keen to uh, to understand and uh, and and as i say turn into an opportunity so that was the kind of the short side. Let's have a look on the flip of that uh, and actually look at a simple fault breakout long setup, okay? So once again, uh, we're gonna look at daily charts, but as I say, once you start to be able to identify and see this, you'll be able to recognize it across all time frames and all instruments. Once again, we're looking for at least, you know, a minimum of two touches of, of, uh, of what would be support in this particular case, but three to four touches is what we would prefer. That's what we prefer, but you know, what we prefer and what the market gives us uh, can sometimes be very different, ladies and gentlemen. And if you've traded for a, a long time, you'll you'll recognize that you'll recognize that yourself. But, you know, we can have as part of our trading plan set up just having simple, right? At least a minimum of two touches, preferably three to four touches. Price then breaks that particular level that we've identified. But on that day, OK, even though it price breaks that level, it actually ends up as a bullish close above the level all right and that's that's what's one of the key elements okay one of the key elements. and it's even better if we it is a you know very nice strong rejection candle okay it just adds to the uh, adds to the confidence what it's done is we're creating a false breakout and if you say trading this on the daily chart we would be buying this the next day so once again drawing tool here we can see prices drifted down you know, we can see, we, you know, we're identifying level here. Price is touching it, okay? Price is touching it a lot. It's coming down to that level. And sometimes it might be, you know, sometimes you might have to just work with what you see in front of you. But what will happen is with a bit of practice, it will become quite clear that invariably, for whatever reason, whatever level, the, you know, there is price there. Price is acting as support. And then we have here, okay, and what would be, well, one, two, three, four, maybe the fifth day here is that you can see price actually during the day breaks that significant level and, you know, and, and, and drops significantly before, okay, the bulls step in and they basically wrestle control of the market and they effectively push the price all the way back up and actually price closes very strongly, very significantly, okay, above that particular level. What it's also created here is this, because this high is uh, and low is, is you know higher than the candles before. Uh, this now is also a bullish engulfing candle. This is a bullish engulfing candle. So as I said, it's a good rejection candle. It's it's fulfilled all those levels. We've had three or four touches of a very clear level. We've priced, we've pressed beneath it. Price has reversed. It's closed on a bullish level. It's a strong close as well. It's also created a bullish engulfing candle there. So you know there's very three or four things have come together that give us a uh, uh, you know uh, our trading opportunity and then basically as you can see price grinds its way uh, north over the next uh, next week or so so hopefully you can see that as i said uh, you can make false breakouts as complicated as you wish them to be there'll be lots of people who might want to add indicators want to add divergences etc personally i think to begin with you know daily chart if you can start to identify these particular you know setups these levels it, it becomes very clear very quickly. You know, you're looking to actually almost kind of give yourself the, the kind of cognitive recognition facility to be able to, to be able to do that. That would allow you to effectively just identify these setups uh, quicker and quicker with time. As always, practice makes perfect. Uh, Edwin says it's an engulfing. Yep, Edwin. Yep, you're clearly there. Clearly there. You can see that yourself. Uh, it's. Uh, it, yep, it was. And that just adds. It's a good rejection candle. It's. It's just more. As I said, it's that confluence of events all coming together. That's what we like to see. Uh, so you know, here's a particular case on uh, dollar against the Japanese uh, yen here on the daily chart. And uh, this is kind of interesting to me because for, for a couple of reasons, uh, but what we actually see is, you know, prices, prices drop down quite nicely. Um, and then for whatever reason, the kind of 105 level, okay, you know, it's probably just around about 105 level, price touches it here, price touches it here and moves off there. Uh, uh, but actually it comes back down and, and, and what hopefully um, you can see is that the price breaks that level during the day, okay? It breaks that level, but actually it powers its way 
all the way back up and closes above that particular level. And that's, as I said, so, you know, you can identify where there's a particular uh, level of support, price will break it, but actually within that day, within that period, price will rally all the way back up. This is basically effectively showing us that, you know, the bulls are in control now, all right? The bulls are up in control. That's, you know, and that's what we want to be. We want to, we know where the bias of the market is. You know, some people would also say that actually, well, Paul, this was actually just a, a double bottom anyway. That's fine. Okay. That's, uh, that's even better. Okay. You, it's more confluence of uh, uh, events coming for you. Next day, you'll be looking to, to buy this. Okay. With your stop beneath the, uh, the recent low. And what we can see is that price basically traded its way back up to this particular area and zone. Okay. Of, uh, of resistance there. And, and you can see price graded its way, uh, sort of dragged its way uh, up there. Okay. So, uh, Ronald says that, you know, he likes the uh, 0.5 prices at a psychological level as well. Um, yeah, that's absolutely, you know, that's absolutely fine. Okay. Um, you'll find that you've got the big round numbers, but also the 50 levels. Okay. Um, can even some people even like the, the 25 levels, but I think definitely the kind of um, uh, the, the half numbers are, are valid. But what I also say is, you know, let the market show you. Okay. Let the market show you. This is, you know, this is about, you know, seeing how the price reacts to those particular levels and, and starts to identify areas of support. Okay. Or areas of resistance that become of interest to us. And that's, that's the, that's the key. That's the key. Um, that's the key thing for us. As I said, you know, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a great believer is to try to keep these things as simple as you can. Okay. As I said, right at the start, uh, men in particular, we have a, uh, we have a way of, uh, we have a way of overcomplicating things. Okay. Then, uh, then we need to keep it nice and simple. All right. And, uh, let the, uh, let the markets play, let the markets play for you in your, in, uh, in your favor. Um, so, you know, this is kind of a, a you know, uh, looking at an example here, this is a bit, you know, because I wanted to show you kind of like, a, you know, uh, show that it's not always clean, it's not always, you know, it's not always uh, uh, pretty, you know, that's just the way markets are. But in this particular case, in the euro dollar, uh, what we can see here is uh, just bring up the tool is that, you know, 110, okay, big round number. Uh, the treble zeros can be kind of interesting. You can see that price has always reacted to this level. We can see that here, okay, price reacts to the level and once again it pushes, okay, and then effectively it uh, closes above and price rallies its way up. But price comes back down to it again, keeps touching it. One day it actually pushes down beneath it, but closes above it in a nice rejection candle okay nice sort of rejection candle you know nice sort of uh, a pin bar before it actually price rallies its way up uh, and but we actually we can see not unsurprisingly price comes back down to that level you know and and here it does a little bit snip beneath it and you know some people would have traded that but the kind of next day, unfortunately, that wouldn't have uh, that wouldn't have uh, you know probably maybe probably just been maybe nipped out on your stop loss depending on how far beneath the uh, the candle you'd placed it. But you can see price sort of rallied its way up, uh, and then actually effectively it did in the end it did break out. Okay, it did break out, and so the breakout traders you know would be very happy because it did break out of that one ten level. But you can see there's been one two. What, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine touches beforehand before the actual the breakout trade made. And that's that's why, you know, personally, I, I like to see bounces, you know, whether that be bounces off dynamic support resistance or particular bounces off particular levels. I, that's that's what I have found for me, what I particularly prefer when it comes to uh, looking at trading opportunities. Uh, and you know, this is an example on the Aussie against the uh, US dollar, right? Um, prices come down and, and form this particular level at the time. It doesn't really know. Some people might say, well, Paul, you know, there was a bit of a, a morning star formation there before it rallied. You know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. But price comes back down to it, taps it before moving up, comes back down to the area again. But it's actually only in this area where it pushes quite significantly beneath that sort of that level, but then reverses on the day and actually closes, okay? It closes above the level, all right? The bulls have taken control, all right? There's strong control there, okay? And then you, as you can see for yourself, you're buying the next uh, on the next day, okay? And then effectively what you're looking to see is as prices move there, okay? We've had a uh, prices try to break out to these lows and this is probably, you know, just uh, just above the kind of, just above the kind of 70 area. Prices try to break beneath it. It can't, it had a false breakout and price has just gone the other way. And that's what we're looking to take. Um, that's what we're looking to take advantage of. 
Um, so simple examples uh, here, you know, kind of this is pound against dollar, you know, in terms of uh, price came all the way down to, in this, in this case, it was the 125 level here, okay? Price sort of comes down to the area, moves away from it. This was, you know, at first a bullish engulfing candle, but actually it's when it comes back to it again, actually price, as you can see, price tries to break beneath that 125 area, which has acted as support before, but it can't, it gets pushed all the way back up and closes significantly above that 125 level in a in a very strong bullish rejection candle uh, before price rallies its way up there for what is effectively almost like the next month all right that it moves there so you know one of the uh, you know these are great setups one of the downsides is that they don't happen as often as we would like on the daily chart hence why you can practice and you can train get yourself experience and understand and then you'll be able to sort of look at different sort of time frames and instruments to to sort of you know uh, turn these into a, an opportunity for yourself so uh, you know, one little final thought for you a little bit to add to some of the sort of kind of advanced traders is you know um uh, you know to help new traders you may want to look for false breakouts that are already happening in the direction of an established trend okay that might just be something that you can uh, add to your uh, add to your watch list to, to take a look at in this particular case you know pound against us dollar it's clearly been in a downtrend it actually does a little false breakout here and moves up but then it starts to create these kind of levels you know we sort of tap 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 and then we try to break out of that level but it can't it falls back beneath it closes a bearish close before the kind of existing trend re-exerts itself. So that's just uh, one thing to have a little look at, okay? If you've already established a trend, well, just maybe have a little look and see if there were false breakouts on uh, on the pullbacks. That might just be something that you uh, might want to sort of add to your watch list. As I said, unfortunately, it doesn't happen as often as we'd like on the daily chart, but when it does, it generally tends to sort of give you a good opportunity. So in conclusion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, many traders love to trade breakouts. Um, however, many breakouts fail, especially in FX. Uh, a failed breakout offers an opportunity for savvy traders. Start off by looking on the daily chart, but you'll find they happen across all instruments and time frames. Look for two to four touches of a clearly identified level. Wait for price to break the level, but close back the other side of the level as your trigger. And why don't we have for the last couple of minutes, just a quick look at uh, some live charts. I hope you found that useful. I hope you found that uh, helpful. I hope that gives you just a little bit of insight. Okay. You know, if you're completely new, maybe this is just a very simple way that you could take away and start to look out for false breakouts to occur. And when they do, they give you an opportunity to, uh, to as I say, to turn a failed breakout into a, a trading opportunity um, for yourself. Uh, that's great, Darlius Russell. Give us a moment. We'll just we've got a couple of minutes left, and I'll just switch across to the chart, and we'll have a little look at what uh, if there's anything we can uh, if there's anything particularly we can see. If you do have any particular questions or thoughts, or want to sort of you know pass any uh, uh, feedback, you can do email global abnormalmarkets.com. Look at it youtube.com forward slash admiral markets where this video will be along with all the other trading spotlights, and you can also find us on Facebook at Admiral Markets Global. Okay, so um, yeah, here we are, euros, Listen, just for a moment or two, here's the uh, euro chart, I've got profiles up on here, um, I think uh, Edwin talked about, uh, he talked about basically, I think pound against Swiss franc, euro against sterling, um, let's, let's have a little look at, uh, let's have a little look at this, okay, so um, uh, this is euro against the sterling on the, the daily chart, and uh, I'm hoping that you can kind of uh, perhaps see that you know, there's been a kind of a, a level here that keeps kind of getting sort of uh, price moves down to, okay, around about the, is that around about sort of 88.70, okay? So as I say, sometimes it's very clear, it's maybe at a big round number, others it you know, can be different, but it's a case of, you know, you have to trade what you see. And hopefully you can see there's been a level here that keeps getting touched. Price came down and touched and moved away from it there. Price came back down to the area put in a, uh, a sort of real engulfing candle, key reversal candle before shooting up. The price came back down and just tapped a little bit beneath it before popping up. And it did so here. But if you remember here, 
whilst it didn't it didn't really break out to that level okay and and it still basically was a kind of a, a bearish close there okay remember what you're looking for is in this like this particular case, you want price to actually press down beneath the level but actually close with a bullish close above it for a for a long trade and maybe we're seeing it coming down to this particular area uh, here again okay you can just sort of see there okay it's a this kind of particular level is, is significant for reasons that don't really matter in many cases you know it's once you can actually see it on the charts that you start to get particularly uh, uh interest as well and uh, and as ronald says you know it, they often act as magnets you're absolutely right once this level becomes clear it acts as a magnet and and what you're looking to do is you're looking to see how the market offers you an opportunity uh, after that uh you know once price gets to that um particular uh, particular level so um unfortunately we're, we're running out a little bit of time today unfortunately I, I, I appreciate that you know we uh um we're you know we're always a bit short in time because this is a subject we could talk about for for the rest of the week to be honest okay but um i hope you found that uh useful interesting as i said this video will be on the trading spotlight okay youtube channel on facebook okay and um, if you find it useful give us a like if there's questions about it please just drop those questions in we'll be very happy to take them on board uh, as always i wish you the best of success in your uh, in your own trading and, and i look forward to uh, speaking to you uh, uh, next monday for the next installment of the trading spotlight uh, webinar series uh, take care everybody and have a uh, and have a fantastic trading week